when we came out with Saints Row 1, there really weren't that many open world games that were out there. And I think that at this point in the industry, it's, it's pretty tough to come up with a game that really is unlike anything else out there. That's one of the things that I, I think the people have always loved about Saints Row. There's nothing else like that in terms of the tone, in terms of all the options and the, the over-the-top nature of everything. Put in your tampons and let's do this. It's kind of like improv, building on top of it, and then you kind of take a step back and look at all what you created. We have a dildo bat plan because we have a meeting. We sit around, we talk about, well, hmm, what if we do this? Have we thought about this? And like these really like intricate conversations about these really silly things. For the most part, the game's all about the player having fun, doing crazy shit, sort of having their way with the game. It's a huge initiative and there's so much to this game that trying to get everything right and to get everything balanced and polished and get everything tested, it's definitely a testament to the team. We've got a talented bunch of folks here that put it all in and try to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against Giants and uh, I think we're doing all right. We love our fans and so that's why Saints Row 4, we really took this approach of it being like a love song to our fans. That we never forget the people that stuck with us this entire time because that's why we got to be where we are. Without Saints Row 1 and 2, there'd be no Saints Row 3. Without Saints Row 3, there'd never be a Saints Row 4. And so finding ways to go and have the game evolve, but evolve in such a way that doesn't alienate them, that makes them feel that they're a part of the journey, rather than being forced to come along for a ride they never wanted, is something that's very important to us. It takes a lot of work to make something this beautifully stupid.